This is a special presentation of the Thai Cats Audio Network. Coverage of the Canadian Football Hall of Fame classes of 2020 and 2021 induction ceremonies. All right, Coach, thanks for joining us. We're minutes, hours away from the ceremony where your bust, your head is going to go up on the wall with these legends, the builders of this league, the people who've uh, stamped their signature on their performance. Now, a lot of people probably ask you, you know, how it feels, but I'm more interested in the story that led up to this point. Um, What was something that drove you through your career through all the times, ups, downs, road games, tryouts, you know, going from being a rookie to being a vet. A lot of things change, but what was one motivating factor for you through your career? I just always have had a deep sense of being competitive, Courtney. That's that's really what it is. I, I always never wanted to be the weak link. It didn't matter what we were doing. I never wanted to let my teammates down. So when I was training... I didn't want to be the one not training, even if I couldn't see any of my teammates or anything. I always had that drive from within me. And then I always played this mind game with myself that somebody else might be doing more. So I would try to do a little bit more and then didn't know what the result would be, but I knew that I wasn't leaving it to chance. Yeah, you don't want to leave anything to chance. I think just getting a chance to play under your leadership, that was definitely a character trait that I tried to embody, something that I think hopefully rubbed off on a lot of the guys that we were around. Um, Mike, would you say the same thing? Yeah, and I, I, what I want to know too is, you know, do you still carry that over to your coaching? Because I understand, like, you know, we've been in the room with you. And what you talk about is, you know, there's a lot outside of football that you kind of focus on. And did that start early on? Like when you were a player, were you sitting there looking at personal development? Because I know that's a huge thing for you, right? Uh, talking about motivation. Like we always are watching Michael Jordan type stuff. And, 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 and it's awesome to see, right? Because once you get into football, that's not really how it is anywhere else, right? And I feel there was a quite a difference there. So was that you while you were playing or did that just kind of come along as you were coaching whether it was positional coordinating head coach uh, how how did that come about well i don't know is this a half hour show because we would take <laughs> hey, you got it so I, I would say that it was kind of formulated from being in the back of the room as a player and being on some teams that were what i would label probably dysfunctional and then being on high performing teams that were very functional uh, that doesn't mean that you always won the gray cup but there was a bond and i was very in tune with what made it the bond though when you're going through it you don't necessarily say, oh okay it was that but building it it was the bond and then you fit you just kind of look back and reflect like what was it and it was just spending time doing things outside of football you know, whether it was, you know, going to have a beer and some wings, uh, laughing, staying around, playing. At that time, it was cribbage, uh, dominoes, uh, those type of things. And then now it just seemed to flow a lot smoother. And so when you were holding other teammates accountable, it wasn't like you were just showing, hey, you know, you're just showing up at work and then critiquing them hard. So I, it's, it's kind of what I, how I'm built anyway, a little bit from the inside at the core. But it wasn't about me anymore. It was about how can I get the vast majority of everybody to come together uh, the majority of the time. And so football is so unique because there's so many different personalities. And that's kind of where it was formulated. And I thought, if we're only going to do football every day, shoot, I tune out, you know, 20 minutes into anything, right? And so I felt like that was a good breakup in between. And I think because it's people-based, it has a great opportunity to withstand the test of time. Yeah, and I think that was, you know, another thing while you're saying that that comes to my mind is we would come in like bye weeks off season, right, because we were around. I remember one time I came into the locker room, I, I think we were, you know, mid-off season, or it might have been like a later on in the bye week, and you looked at me and you go, what are you doing in here? <laughs> and to get that from you were you were my defensive coordinator at the time to get that from your defensive coordinator you're like what do you mean I'm working hard coach and you're like no get away from football right and that was probably the first time where I was like oh like he he kind of actually gets it because you're right you get this burnout right and did you like did you experience that while you were playing is that kind of where you got that from I did and and I was I was that person with the mindset that you know 
everybody that in any business, wherever you're at, it's always worked hard. You, you, there's going to be a common denominator across the board, and it's that I worked hard. I wasn't afraid. I was up when other people weren't. I did this. I did that. But you don't put batteries in yourself. There's got to be a time for recharge. So what I found is that sometimes you think, yeah, I'm working optimally. But when you look from the outside in, you're not because you're not fresh, you're tired, you haven't had a fresh air break, you're not drinking water, you're not doing things that are just necessary. And so I, had, I did that later, you know, and I guess the phrase kind of went train smarter and not harder, mm -hmm. or quality versus quantity. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the approach I took, not just in the physical workouts, but also in the mental workouts and with my, you know, obviously my, my job and then also with my family. Yeah, so I know we're talking about burnout kind of along the same lines, but every athlete I find maybe at a certain point in your career, you don't realize you're at a fork in the road, but then you look back and you realize that that could have went left. I'm glad it went right. Or this was the moment when I realized like I had it. Do you have any defining moment or something that stands out in your mind as a real milestone where either you knew for sure, like you were validated that I'm walking the right path or maybe I can do this. Or maybe it was a, a potential moment where you might have chosen alternate ending and we don't end up here in the Hall of Fame. Is there any moment that stands out to you as one that's uh, more clear looking back? That's a great question. I'll, I'll try to give you a short winded great answer. <laughs> and that is. When I played for Ron Lancaster, and you may have known, I may have shared this with you guys. I probably did it the year end. But Ron Lancaster, who played, I believe, 20 plus years in this league, uh, he just said to me, oh, make them take your cleats. And I thought, hmm, didn't really know what he was saying. But it, well, I think what he was saying is there's nothing else out there like this. And your window to play is like this. This is my own definition. Well, I'll, I'll talk to him when he's upstairs, when I get upstairs with him, right? But uh, so I just always wanted to do that. And for me, though, what he didn't tell me, and I got a little bone to pick with him, is that it's going to end abruptly, right? So when you're that focused and you don't have a plan B and they take your cleats, and that's what happened to me mid-season in, in my 12th year, right? And so I was so committed. So I guess what I'm saying to you is I was so into – being the best version of football that I could be for that eight year or four year, I guess is the average span that I didn't, I didn't know. I just knew that this is the opportunity I was given. I'm going to make the most of it. Okay. We're winning a little bit. People are listening. I'm a captain. Uh, what's going on? I switched programs, went to or organizations. Rather, I went to Toronto, went to the back of the stretch line and then the next year I'm in front of the stretch line. So I kind of knew I was on the right path, not just because of individual accolades, just from the environment that was around. And I was kind of renewed also of being, you know, going from one model in Hamilton to the Toronto Hamilton. I told you it was going to be long-winded. Heard I, I said short-winded. No, no, that's all, that's all the win we need, though. No, those, those coaches that you have that stand out, um, you mentioned Ron Lancaster, yes. legendary coach, those – little nuggets those are the ones that stick with you who's somebody who might be in your hall of fame who's somebody we we all stand on the shoulders of the people who came before us i'm sure there's a ton of people too many to name but who's one person who you think was instrumental well i would say this i'm gonna give you a i'll give you a color outside the lines answer I was always a person, you guys know all my stuff though, right? So I, I was always a person that, yeah, it's easy to study the people that are shining at that moment. But I was always interested in the people that played for 10 years, 12 years. What is it that they're doing? And I'd watch them from a distance and I may ask them some questions as I got to know them. And so I would say those people were instrumental and they don't even know it, right? And then I can give you some tangible ones like Don Sutherland who taught me the game. He taught me to first think like an offense, which he didn't quote it like that. That's what I brought to, to you guys in the defense, but that's really what he did. He taught me to think like an offense. Uh, Ron Lancaster, Mike Pinball, Clemens, um, you know, and then, you know, here I go. Yeah, I could just rattle off a bunch of teammates um, along the journey. Yeah, and I want to go back to when you said it ended abruptly for you, right, because you shared this story with us 
when it did and, and kind of the, the mindset you went through to what led you back to coaching. How, when it ends abruptly like that, how hard was it to now say, okay, I'm a coach now, right? I'm a coach. I now have to help these guys be able to play on the field, but I can't play on the field with them, right? Like, how do you get around that mindset of, okay, this ended abruptly. I had a great career, probably still wanted to play at the time. And how do I now turn this around and be, hey, now I have to be a coach. I can't go out there and play with them. I just have to get these guys ready. That's that's a that's a hard thing to do, and I'd imagine it wasn't easy at your time. It wasn't easy at all, and I went through all the emotions, frustration, anger, anxiety. I had a family, so I didn't get right into coaching. That's the thing is I didn't know what I was doing. I was trying to figure it out, and all of a sudden you're going through your Rolodex of contacts, and, yeah, people are more than willing to help, but it doesn't mean they have an opening. And so I did what you guys did. I did TV and radio for a year, and I kind of thought that was uh, – that was a path I was headed down with Sportsnet, and I really enjoyed that. And what was fun about it is I was really committed to the craft, and I had some great people around me in, in McCormick and, and, uh, and Martine and all them down there and Ivanka. And they, they just, I watched the lifers do it, and I just said, okay, here's my next challenge. I want to be the best. So I remember doing a hit. Uh, not live, doing a hit, and then I'd say, I need to see the video. And it was just <laughs> because it was, it, was, it was football to me. I need to review to get better. I'm not waiting until next week. I need to see. I'm, oh, my gosh, that's terrible. Right? right? So uh, I remember being submerged into that, and then I got a call the next year. Uh, Adam Rita had stepped aside and said, I think you're going to be a great coach one day, but I'm, you know, he was, had moved on. And then uh, Jim Barker called, and I interviewed. And so then I took another detour uh, away from the TV and radio, and, and that's when I stepped into coaching. And so now you're Coach O. Yeah. And I, I think it's safe to say that in the time that you've been coaching, you started to make a name for yourself in that lane. Um, many of the people who might be new to the CFL in the last you know, five, ten years, that's how they know you, and you've sure stepped out of the shadow of player O into your own shoes as coach O what are the goals that you have for that legacy because I know if I know you like I know you like it doesn't end here with this night going into the hall of fame for the championships that you won as a player the the all-stars that you won at three different positions for all of the different things that you accomplished catching the ball toting that thing tackling and all that what what are your goals now? Where do you go as as coach Owen the next leg of this legacy? You know, I'll I'll make it I'll say it like this. I truly believe that once, you know, I led the CFL in interceptions and I and I moved to free safety and led the league in tackles and, and I was an all pro and an all star. Okay, that was great, but I wanted to win more. I wanted to win more. And so I said, Okay, how can I make Kenny Wheaton better? How can I make Jordan Younger better? How can Michael Fletcher better, be better. And when they became all pro, we, the water level ranged. And then that's what gets me going. My passion is truly people. When I see other people feel what I felt and as a result of hard work and commitment and showing them a different way and just being like a conduit and channeling their energy, that, that gets me going. That was my goal. And so I say that to say this, that's where I'm at in coaching. My desire is that Tommy Condell as the number one is the best version of himself and Mark Washington is the best version and Jeff Reinbold and Robin Ross and I want I want to bring out the best I want to create an environment where they can be themselves and still be challenged in year 38 of coaching and I think I can do that because it's people based it has nothing to do with the experience of it so that's my goal and along that I understand we're in a win-loss business but I won't be judged by that right if Go talk to the people that have worked with us from the equipment to them. And if they say things that I didn't help them grow as people or didn't allow them more time with their family or work-life balance, then I will think I have failed. But I won't, I won't be judged by the scoreboard or that. I know the goal. I'm, I'm more competitive than anybody. But I also know that I'm in the wrong profession because you sign up to lose unfortunately there's nobody that's been undefeated for multi years so you better learn how to deal with adversity and so my goal is to help you be the best at this that you can be and you be the best at this by doing as many as I can with you and doing and doing that throughout the whole organization and it's funny you talk about that because there was a, a little 
a little meeting we had last year, and I could kind of tell where, you know, you're sitting there talk about this head coach style now where you're a people person. But Courtney and I both know you want to be up there on the whiteboard, putting X's and O's, drawing up some defenses. And it was funny because as we were doing it, you're the head coach at this time. And I'm sitting there, and I start asking a question. Hey, what, what would we do against this RPO? You should have seen Coach O light get, up. He get the, yeah. And okay. Do you, and do you get that? Like, do you still get that itch when you're with those guys like Mark Washington, Tommy Condell? Like, I, I would almost want to sit in one of those rooms to see how much you go off with that. But it's quite the difference, right, from the coordinating to now the head coach thing because you have to take a step back. Truly from what it seems like you – love doing in terms of the X's and O's drawing stuff up playing the little chess match yeah it's at times it's tough at times I'm a lot more busy so it it, it doesn't make it as tough but I just want to share with them and help them be better and let them pick and choose right just spread everything out but I do get passionate because I think I can add value to their value and when I can add value it's hard to withhold that but I also at the same time in a position of management and that sort of thing in a in this type of role there's that fine line of micromanaging or you, you know people wanting to do just what you want to do right so sometimes you have to let them go through it and fails the wrong word, but not achieve. And there has to be grace, though, on my part. You can't hold them accountable, right, that, that way. And the thing is, I need grace, too. I, I make mistakes every day, right? It's just I, I, I don't yell at myself as much, you know, as, as, as not. But no, I don't, I don't do a lot of that. But uh, I do enjoy the X's and O's at time, watching film. And, you know, I'll still go down there, you know, with my four or five plays. I'll sit with Tommy and watch the offense quickly. I'll sit and... Uh, with Mark, I was, you know, and, and Craig now, and I'm, I'm still going to throw my two cents out there. But ultimately, they're 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 99.9 percent empowered. Nice. Well, Coach, uh, as a player who's played on one of your teams, many of your teams, I say that impact they're trying to make are definitely making it. Uh, this is a moment to be relished, a body of work that few have been able to compile and put together. So, from us to you, congratulations, well deserved, and. I just know this is a milestone along a path that you're still running, so we're excited to see what you do next, and we appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. I appreciate y'all. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. So. The Canadian Football Hall of Fame. Induction weekend coverage on the Cats Audio Network.